no longer an institution that's dominated by the East Coast residents is number one on my priority list as the leader of this community. We think that working with communities in Illinois, Ohio, Kansas, Missouri, North Dakota, all of these places are the way to go. And the last time we were here, when uh, your presidential partner was here, we brought that issue to him. And he made a commitment to us that if elected, he will support that agenda. And it's something we feel very strong about. It's unfair that Minnesota sits here with 25,000 people, and we have one-third the number of delegates as New Jersey, which I believe doesn't even have 5,000 people. But beyond that, you as an institution, we all want to preserve and nurture and grow. So the question of this idea of electing delegates, you touched on it correctly because I've been on the Elections Commission, and I believe the commissioner at that time got angry that he wasn't being called to meetings and being treated as a member of the executive. So he abandoned the objective of reaching out to actually systematize the concept of electing delegates. And so we're still here. We've had the 2004 elections without them. We had the 2006 elections without them. The idea of electing delegates is good but we need to set the parameters. Do I, as the elected leader of this community, in order to represent this chapter, have to submit to another electoral process? I have five other people who are elected with me on the executive committee. Do they have to submit to an electoral process to represent you? And I believe that when we were elected, you entrusted us to represent you in various capacities. Does the chairman of the board have to submit to an electoral process in order to represent you? These are important questions to resolve. These are important questions to answer. Do we go tomorrow to say we're going to elect 15 delegates for what? I'm not going to another election in this state in the next two years. I can guarantee you that. I've been through one. It's been validated. <laughs> I have no more interest in the other election. Everybody, I've been campaigning. I'll call out to my man, but I won't be. I won't be delegated. Yeah. 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 Then we'll go to another debate. <laughs> 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 That's what it thought. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't make sense. And this is the process of the second stage of that resolution passed by the board, which we have not reached. And people are making a lot of noise for nothing. We're not gonna bring that issue to this level for this discussion. <coughs> because it's, it's, a, it's a useless exercise. If we have 15 delegates, we resolve we have 15 delegates, and between the board and the executive, we have 11 members elected. Should we elect four? Who knows what the, the situation is in Chicago or Ohio? It has to be uniform. And the parameters, when you establish legislation that has prerequisites, those prerequisites must be met before that legislation can become effective. It's not that people are running from election. We know what we achieve in election, but we know also the cost of election. Not only financial, but in terms of the psychology of the economy, the society, the frictions that are caused. We're not prepared to take this uh, community to another such process in an unguided fashion. It, it's, it's just, it doesn't make sense. And we need to have the dialogue, the guidelines established, so that we can understand what is a uniform way to go that Minnesota, Ohio, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, 
all EULA chapters will follow. The second thing is this issue of the board. We submitted the names of our two board members to represent this chapter <coughs> back in January. They, when I began the dialogue to get the contact information to submit this information, right in that process, I got a call from the board chair, James Lassa. And he began a trend of conversation, which was attempting to get me into understanding a line of discussions in Eula. And as he went on, and we got to the question of oh, who are your board candidates, the board representatives. Then I gave the name of uh, our vice president, Andrew Temming, and uh, board member. Vice chair. No. Oh, board vice president. president and the board member, uh, Henry Kessley. And his first question to me was, is he related to Anthony Kessley? And I said, no. But before that, all, all these discussions, you know, when I get it, I'll call you. <laughs> and he said, I'll call you later on today, but I will go to the library and email you my information. But within that time, I got his information and emailed it to him. Since then, that call has not come. Since January. Since January. Okay. And since January, he has failed to make contact with our board members. So all of these deliberations that they are carrying on, they are going on in the absence of our representation. We find that unacceptable and illegal and illegitimate. People need to understand that in democracy, we, some of us have put our lives on the line for democracy. We will not sit here for people to short circuit the process. Take your case to the voters, whether they be the board, whether they be the general public, make your case and let them vote. But don't hide other people, exclude other people out of the process so you can make horrid decisions that favor you. And this is what Lassa is doing now on this board. We called him the other day and said, oh, I'll send the information the secretary will get a hold of you. Pogba. Vice President called the Secretary, oh, send me the thing, I'll call you back. Nobody's calling back. Nobody's calling back. There's a deliberate design to exclude people who they are unsure of and go on and make decisions and impose it, and this is bad. And this is what we all need to come to. And people need to understand this. And I also say this, that this process of electing the leadership of this organization, we believe it needs to change. But we also believe that that change needs to start on the right foundation, on a foundation that is understood by all and is fair and is within the rules. That will support, that will enhance, and we feel that it needs to take account of the population strengths, but that's something we have to carry out through the constitutional process to the board because it is of utmost importance that all of us preserve the union. Having said that, I will also go on to say that this is not an oil and meeting. There has been a lot of uh, the discussions back and forth. Why is OLM having this meeting? This is not an OLM meeting. This office has been used by the Grand Jury Association for meeting this very conference room. The Bonk County Association has used it. Progressive women have used it. Uh, Nimba Association have used it. The Mandingo Association has used this facility. OLM uses this facility. So many organizations, old timers, my office is open to Liberian community organization and individuals who want to host meetings. I believe my, my, my brother here has used it too. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, you, 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 you
So the idea that this meeting is held here today and people want to accuse the OLM for hosting a candidate and doing a lot of castigation, it is unfair, it is untrue. This is not an OLM meeting. I'm here in my private capacity, but I'm also here as the leader of this community to listen to what our dear friend and brother has to say. And as we made clear in our release yesterday, if any ULAC candidate wants to come to town and have a, a, a meeting here, all they have to do is pick up the phone and call me, and they can come, and I will attend the meeting. And that door is open to all. So I want to make that clear also. This meeting is not endorsed by OLM, it's not hosted by OLM. We are here in our capacity as private citizens and community leaders to listen to our friend and brother as to what they want to do to lead our overall Liberian conglomeration through ULA. And the other thing I want to do, which I really despise, but I must do it because sometimes you have to respond to certain things. The time will come will respond in the appropriate arena. Mariah Seaton is carrying this in window that, where is Kulabaka? People yeah. have gone from all over. Yeah, Minister in the office. Yeah, why the cover took money from Mariah and, and he went and he's not supporting her? I received, she said, I received a check. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can we yeah. the check? No one. And let Mariah show the cancel check. We saw Mariah here on the morning of the election to, to take that. pictures. This is the chairman and the co chair of the campaign. Okay? This sort of, of you know, scandalous politics is not the way you win friends and influence people. But I want to make it clear to you that at no time you did your humble servant take a penny from a rice seater. And at no time did I have an exchange with her that I was going to support her for you for the ULA presidency because I work with Mariah Seaton. And I know her track record in other organizations. And this is not the time and place to have that discussion. But I can tell you, at no time, if she says she gave money, tell her to show the cancel check. Since she said she sent a check to online, let her produce a cancel check. Because they in the in one they say members, some people in the, in the oil and you know, if she actually gave money, she would have said, you know, I gave the money to Copper yeah. Point, I gave the money to Atta Zakama, I gave the money to O'Brien Yima. But this is the kind of malignant politics that has us sitting in a diaspora now, some of us. I'm wondering when we'll have the chance to go home. Lying on people, saying things that never happened. And I just want to make that very clear here. Yeah.